In 550 AD, Europe was plunged into chaos following the collapse of Rome. In this context, the Goths, with their strength and cunning, partitioned the former territories and established new kingdoms from the fragments of the empire. Across the vast eastern steppes, Scythian horsemen thundered like storms, their bows flashing under the sun, compelling even the most powerful states to exercise caution. In the rugged Balkans, the Thracian and Dacian tribes skillfully maintained their authority, constructing fortified settlements that demonstrated their wealth and influence amid a rapidly transforming Europe. Yet barely a century passed. By 650 AD, the landscape of Europe had been completely transformed. The Goths had vanished from historical records. The Scythians seemed to have disappeared. The Thracian tribes were forgotten. In their place, stretching from the Baltic to the Adriatic, from the Elbe to the Volga, a new people came to dominate the map, the Slavs. This sudden emergence presents a paradox. How could an entire people vanish within a single generation? And how could a culture that left almost no archeological trace expand across half of Europe? This has been described as the greatest magic trick in European history, and for centuries, historians struggled to explain this phenomenon. Scholars have been divided into two schools of thought. One contends that the Slavs had always existed within forests and marshlands, remaining invisible until they suddenly appeared on the map. The other school argues that they were outsiders, emerging from uninhabited lands and expanding like a conquering wave. Both perspectives rely on fragmentary evidence, but fail to explain the paradox of simultaneous emergence and disappearance. Today, genetics has solved the case, revealing the true picture. The peoples who seemed to vanish merely underwent a transformation of identity, while their bloodlines persisted, preserved within modern Slavic communities. Around 400 AD, in Central Europe, the continent was divided into multiple regions controlled by different tribes each community exhibiting distinct cultural traits, social organization, and territorial boundaries. The Goths settled throughout Poland, leaving behind pottery and runic inscriptions on graves. The Vandals marched toward North Africa, establishing new kingdoms. Scythian horsemen continued to dominate the Ukrainian steppes, described by Greek historians as agile cavalry with precise archery that once struck fear into Persian kings. In the Balkans, the Thracian and Dacian tribes built fortifications, creating independent centers of power that compelled Rome to exercise caution. Two centuries later, Around 650 AD, historical records fall almost silent. Names such as Goths, Scythians, Thracians, and Dacians nearly vanish. In their place, the term Sclavians, the Slavs, begins to appear widely in chronicles. Byzantine historians describe raids across the Danube, while Arab geographers mention the Slavs in distant markets. By around 700 AD, Slavic-speaking communities had spread from the Elbe to the Volga and from the Baltic to the Adriatic. While Celtic tribes left burial mounds spanning millennia and Germanic tribes left behind pottery, runes, and clear cultural traces, the Slavs left almost no archaeological evidence before the 6th century. Then, suddenly, they appeared everywhere, becoming the most numerous population group. Numerous archaeological studies indicate that this emergence was not the result of a large-scale military conquest, but rather a process of cultural assimilation and population expansion driven by effective agriculture, settlement, and the development of stable communities. The first breakthrough in studying Slavic origins came from the Y chromosome. In the late 20th century, geneticists mapped the Y DNA of Slavic populations and found that more than half of men in Poland, Ukraine, and Russia carried the R1, a lineage. Initially, R1A was considered a Slavic marker, but it proved to be far too ancient, nearly 20,000 years old, and widely present among Indo-European nomadic groups from India, the Brahmins, to Iran. Persian tribes, and even in Viking burials. R1A demonstrates that Indo-European groups were once widespread across many regions, but it does not specifically identify the Slavs. Further analysis revealed two important subclades. 
R1AZ280, concentrated among Eastern Slavs, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. R1AM458, concentrated among Western Slavs, Poland, Czechia, Slovakia. A 2015 study by Peter Underhill and colleagues confirmed that these two subclades are almost exclusively found in Slavic-speaking communities with an estimated age of 4,000-5,000 years in Central and Eastern Europe. These represent the distinct genetic signature of the Slavs. When scientists analyzed ancient DNA, the story became even clearer. In Poland, archaeological evidence shows that, before 500 AD, Gothic graves contained Y-DNA lineages I1 and R1B. After 500 AD, graves shifted to R1AM 458 corresponding to the Slavs. However, autosomal DNA analysis reveals strong continuity. This demonstrates that the Goths did not abandon their lands but culturally transformed into Slavs while retaining their original bloodlines. Similarly, in Ukraine, the Scythian horsemen disappear from the records, but ancient and modern DNA demonstrate continuity. The Scythians are closely related to the Yamnaya, the ancestors of Indo-European languages. Some ancient DNA studies in Eastern Europe indicate that modern populations in Ukraine and southern Russia carry a portion of their genetic ancestry from ancient steppe populations, including the Scythians, this provides evidence for a degree of genetic continuity from antiquity, although it cannot be asserted that the entirety or the majority of modern DNA derives directly from unaltered Scythian lineage. In the Balkans, Y-DNA haplogroup I2A is among the most common lineages across many South Slavic populations, such as Bosnia, Croatia, and Serbia. According to YSTR studies, this indicates a deep and long-standing genetic presence in the region. The origin of I2A is considered very ancient, associated with prehistoric hunter-gatherer communities. A 2018 ancient DNA, ADNA study published in Nature confirmed the persistence of genetic components from ancient hunter-gatherer and indigenous groups over millennia in this area. However, this does not imply that modern Serbs, Croats, Bosnians, or Bulgarians are direct descendants of ancient Thracians or Illyrians. Rather, they are the product of long-term genetic admixture with indigenous lineages interwoven with successive waves of historical migration. Genetic and archaeological evidence indicate that the expansion of the Slavs was not driven by military conquest or mass migration. Instead, it was a process of large-scale cultural assimilation. The Slavs brought with them a flexible way of life. Small, egalitarian villages that adapted easily, agriculture suited to the post-Roman era, a flexible belief system that incorporated local deities, and a simple, easily learned language that facilitated rapid spread. Slavic culture functioned like a cultural virus. It could infect Goths, Scythians, and Thracians, transforming them socially and culturally into Slavs while preserving their original bloodlines. This represents a unique form of cultural assimilation, making the Slavs more a cultural phenomenon than a single homogeneous genetic community. In the 19th and 20th centuries, nationalism and the pan-Slavic movement promoted narratives of pure origins. The Soviet Union also relied on the myth of a single Slavic family to legitimize territorial claims and political influence. The reality is far more complex. Poland carries Gothic heritage, Ukraine carries Scythian heritage, and the Balkans carry Thracian, Illyrian heritage. Modern DNA demonstrates that the Slavs are a cultural phenomenon rather than a single genetic community. The story of cultural assimilation was concealed for political purposes, but DNA cannot be censored. Today, millions of Eastern Europeans undergo DNA testing, and the results often come as a surprise. A Pole may discover a Germanic Gothic lineage. A Ukrainian may uncover Scythian ancestry. A Serb may carry the I2, a haplogroup over 10,000 years old. These surprises align perfectly with scientific research. Slavic identity is not a story of pure blood, but of cultural transformation. Within us echo the peoples who vanished from the records, yet live on in our genes. The greatest magic trick in European history was not the complete eradication of a people, but their transformation into a new entity, combining diverse bloodlines and cultural heritages into a shared identity. 
Modern Poles carry in their DNA the echoes of the Goths, remnants of warriors who once ravaged Rome. Ukrainians inherit Scythian blood, evidence of the powerful horsemen of the steppes, while Serbs retain in their genes traces of Thracian Illyrian ancestry, descendants of the ancient Balkan tribes. Together, these lineages coalesce into a new cultural entity, the Slavs. The Slavs were never a single tribe with a uniform genetic lineage. They were a cultural wave, spreading and reshaping the demographic landscape of Europe without erasing its past. Modern genetic and archaeological studies show that ancient bloodlines persisted alongside cultural transformation. Indigenous communities were not annihilated, but assimilated through Slavic language, customs, religion, and social structures. This process highlights that cultural assimilation can be more powerful and enduring than military conquest, and that a people's identity can be constructed on cultural foundations rather than solely on genetic heritage. This secret endures within each of us today, reminding us that history is not a simple tale of wars and migrations, but a multi-layered tapestry woven from diverse bloodlines, customs, and cultural heritages. The Slavs stand as living proof of the power of culture to preserve bloodlines, maintain identity, and create a continuous community across millennia, demonstrating that cultural transformation can coexist with genetic continuity, shaping Europe in ways that ancient chronicles could never record.